Hello, viewers. Once again, I am Patrick with Amazing Picture Studios with my wonderful co-host, Dan. Dan. Yep, I'm here today, and we're here to show you the Titan, the mother of all super ships. Anyway, uh, continue. It is okay. this... We, we stopped playing Space Engineers for a while after we pushed that to the, uh, to the workshop, and uh, then we saw an update, an update we like, and it makes our ship more functional and looks more... And made it look more beautiful. So let's hop yep. in the wonderful little transport craft. We'll take you to it and show you the uh, show you what what this thing's capable of. And we're off. All right, so Dan, go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, your work you did. Well, uh, starting off um, in this design, we went with a different propulsion system than the uh, older Thor design. We nicknamed it Odin because it's the father of Thor. It's literally the father of all super ships um, in terms of uh, speed and power for its size. And basically what we did is, uh, I'll show you in engineering when we get there, but uh, for now, what we're going to tell you is that it's a gravity drive system. It is not thruster driven, so it does not have the same limitations of thrusters. Even though it does take a good bit of power, it's actually very efficient for its size, and it can propel the ship to extremely high speeds, and we'll show you that later on. Alright, so I'm going to fly around the outside and show you a little bit of what we did. Now, flying around the outside, you can tell it has a slightly different profile than uh, some of its predecessors, mainly the Mattis and the Orion. Um, and you notice the uh, windows. <laughs> it has windows. All the windows. More windows. <laughs> now, when we decided to add in this uh, gravity propulsion system, which was originally our original design, but with rocks, which failed miserably. Yeah, yeah it was really hard to calibrate. <laughs> we finally got what we wanted, and we built it. But it carries almost the same profile of most of our other ships, except slightly different. Most with more windows... Uh, some heavier armor. It's longer than the Orion, but thinner than the Orion. Um, yeah, it's got long. And one of the it's big like changes with its profile is that we have a raised bridge. Now, the only oh, reason a, we added in a raised bridge and a lower observation deck is mainly because of the fact that we got real tired of seeing, uh, of not being able to see things. I mean, there's still a backup bridge in case that bridge. In case you know you come under attack, we need to get to another bridge. Now, yeah, but its profile is slightly different. Well, correction, a lot different than most of our other ships. It actually, goes against most of our average ship designs. So we're gonna go ahead and land this in the hangar, and we'll show you some cool, uh, some cool features that we added in. Yes, indeed, we will show you all the cool goodies, um, and. Uh, the cool uh, interoperability features so the ship actually works with all of our other designs very well. We'll show you that in a moment once we land and uh, take you on a tour of the uh, Titan class. Now the Titan class is the start of our uh, some of our classes to where we're actually going to be getting rid of some of our older ships. Um, primarily the Mattis. I mean, we're going to try and retrofit them to the best of our ability, but it doesn't work. We could scrap them. Now, yep. I want to show you one of the coolest parts of the ship. They, we have hangar doors that could conceal the hangar and shield it. I yeah, was so playing really around cool. with rotors, and uh, I well, I got to the point where I was playing around with rotors, see what happens, and uh, actually, it's pretty cool. So I'll um, go ahead and find the hangar doors. Oh. oh, yes, and uh, also note the uh, awesome new uh, terminals that they uh, added. They added two more terminals, uh, so you have an enclosed uh, cab terminal for large ships, and you have this secondary terminal, which is kind of a hybrid, so it allows you to be in first-person mode. Now, so you can actually, uh, I hate to cut you sit. off, but um, yeah. right now, if you're paying attention, those doors actually swivel into place and seal off the uh, hangar from, ex from the exterior protecting the ships inside and it also comes in handy because from the outside you can't really tell that's a hangar it actually just looks like a piece of raised armor now yep i'm gonna show you the hangar uh this is our hangar design we have uh it's pretty much our basic hangar design with the raised uh lock on large ship platforms for us to uh 
lock our lock ships into over. place when in transit. It also yep. has these similar raised platforms as in all of my other designs with machine gun turrets. And then we yep. got the hangar, co hangar control room. The nice thing about the hangar control room is also that we have uh, the ability to look out of the uh, room while we're in the seat, which is real nice, especially if you put somebody down here for command and control purposes. Yeah, it goes back to that uh, new uh, terminal block uh, that they uh, added, the new terminal uh, system they added. So we're yeah. going to walk you through this uh, bottom floor right now. This here hides a gravity generator, no big deal, it's just we we had to go into minute detail with gravity. So let's walk yeah. through the ship. All right, let's go to the front first. Like most <laughs> of our, like most of my, like most of our designs, I usually design the front half of the ship. Yeah. Now, one of the things I've added on was a docking port that is similar, actually 100% similar to all of our other docking port designs. So you could dock any one of our modular ships to it, and you'll be able to enter and exit the uh, ship with ease. I mean, given it is the newer design rather than the older, since it's only a one-block uh, doorway. Yep. But that's why we built adapters. That way. That, that's why we built adapters. Yep. We can handle that. So moving along, this is a main room. Uh, this is mainly more like a lobby upon exiting the hangar. Um, we have a gravity generator that provides gravity. Um, up here, we have more passageways. And we actually color coded our uh, ship's uh, rooms. Yellow, yes, believe it or meaning. Not, we, uh, we, we actually did color code these, so they're we, awesome. We took uh, an idea, well, a recommendation from uh, one of our buddies, Yanni, also known as Phantom with Phantom's Media Tactical, who watched some of our videos and said, hey, why not add in color coding? So I was like, no, color coding sucks. And then I was like, wait. It's actually pretty good. Yellow is for command and control. Um, <clears throat> so like the bridge and other sure. command and control areas. Now moving along, moving along, we are going to enter a forward storage compartment with an exit to a gun port. Now the yeah, cool thing, side. there's one on each side. Now I'm going to take off real fast and show you what I did here. Now, one of the things is that I like these windows and I like the gun port, well, the window to look out above the gun port. So I actually made a command and control center for the gun port. Just in case, you know, they add in functionality to these things and you need people to man a console to work it. Um, yeah. Moving along, there's not really much to see up here. That's just catwalks that go above things. If our forward, uh, like Engineer in all of our area. ship designs, our forward engineering a life support area, providing gravity and extra power to the ship's subsystems. And yep. it goes through into another room. As in most of my ship designs, the bottom front half of the ship is all storage and engineering. So yep. we... So once again, we did a lot more with storage on this one. And then if you walk in here, like the Mattis and the Orion, the front area is for storage, in refining Goodness. parts. Oh yeah, don't forget the uh, forward uh, gyros. Gyro. For forward control. gyros. With uh, yes, wonderful sir. catwalks that walk along the top so you can monitor the systems well from up here. Um, yeah. So this is like a lot of our other designs and I'm actually real happy with it. it we're, we're trying to use the same design for a lot of things. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're trying to use the same design for a lot of things, so that way it makes things about... It's it's a good template, it's a good place to start off, rather than changing it up completely. Yep. So we're going to walk back to the hangar, and then we're going to have uh, Dan take us down to the bottom, the bottom observation deck, since that's closest, and then walk us through engineering, the actual proportional pr propulsion, propulsion system. system. Because that's the main meat... That's the main meat of the uh, operation here. That propulsion system, let's just say, this is not much different than all of our other ships. So, that's the main difference between most of our ships. So anyway, Dan, go ahead and lead on. 
All right, I'm going to take you down to the lower observation deck, and we're going to look around at it. Falcon will take you up to the bridge later, but it, and it's directly above our heads. But uh, we're going to go down, and I want to call this the lower sky deck because number one, it's all glass. Now you might say, "What the hell is this doing in a warship?" And the main reason why is um, I consider this more of a reconnaissance area. In other words, it's not integral to the ship's you know defense, but it is nice to have when you're trying to oversee operations. And it gives you a little more view viewpoints. It gives you more better uh, better viewpoints actually. Um, in terms of running the ship and uh, observing things and making sure everything's happening the way it should. Another it should. another good thing with this is that it also um, gives us the ability since the uh, since the bridge overlooks the top of the ship, um, it is impossible to see what's underneath it. So yep. when in basic when when in standard non military operations. This deck could be used for uh, ensuring we don't run into something below us, or yep. to keep an eye out for enemy ships trying to attack from below. Another yep. reason why it's here is that uh, it really actually does come in handy for um, flying, and it also looks nice too, like when you're just flying long distance and there's no combat. You're in friendly. You're in friendly area. This place could be a nice little observation deck to you know, stand here and look out into the black abyss of yep. space. Yeah, it's kind of uh, you know also I want to call it a recreation zone for the ship's crew. You know, because they need time off sometimes, and this is a great place to go, just to chill and look at stars and have fun. And <laughs> yeah. Just anyway, don't, just don't play football down here, or you'll risk breaking. Yeah, you don't want to break windows. the glass panes. That's a long ways down. Um, <laughs> the gravity generators will fling you off, and God knows where. Anyway, we're gonna go back into the meat and potatoes of this ship, and we're gonna show you the really special uh, engineering engineered system that drives this ship. And we're also gonna I'm also gonna explain to you why the gravity is so important in this ship. Uh, but anyway, this is the reactor room. Um, we have multiple uh, access levels, and the reason why we don't see any stairs for the most part in here is even though we have gravity in this room, it's really, once you get to the back of the ship, there is no gravity uh, due to interference on the gravity drive, um, but I'll first we'll show you the gravity drive. This is just the reactor room, as you can see, you know, we have it's, reactors. Uh, the the reactor ceiling. room, once again, is kind of similar amongst all our designs. We like to put all the reactors into one area. Well, all the yeah. large reactors into one area, so that way it could pr uh, be the main propulsion of the ship. So anyway, go ahead and yep. lead on. All right, we're just going to go in here and ta-da! This is it. This is the gravity drive. We're going to go up here for now, and once we get past this point, there's no gravity. So our jetpack automatically kicks on, and basically we're going to show you these cubes. We're going to fly up. We're going to look right here. And basically what we have here we have a forward facing gravity generator and a backwards facing gravity generator and then a whole bunch of uh, artificial masses now what are these masses for you might ask well these this is the main gravity drive basically when you turn on a single uh, gravity generator all these cubes get pulled in this direction that gravity generator is uh, pushing with its force you know so you know with the gravity generator facing forward you know it would provide a force backwards and then, you know, the uh, one that's facing backwards, you know, would push forwards. So, uh, basically, um, what we do is we turn on one of these gravity generators, and it basically pulls all these blocks forward, thus pulling the ship forward. And it's actually quite effective, as you'll see in a later video. This ship actually moves quite fast, and the uh, other advantage it has is it doesn't use any power. But, uh, anyway, on to the well, back. Well, is very little. Um... Yeah, with, even with here. even with this here, we still have our thruster engines. Um, yes, mainly for mainly for thrusters. short range maneuvering or maneuver in combat. Uh, these yeah. are mainly think of it more like a warp drive. You need to go one long distance and try and get there as fast as possible. Well, if we're going long distance, you're not going to want to start up and be real slow at it. So we'll actually yeah, turn these on and it will get us propelled there uh, more expediently than uh, our thrusters would. Yeah, that's that's the main reason behind creating this drive. The other thing is, is uh, this drive is actually very efficient, so it doesn't burn through all your reactor fuel just trying to uh, get up and going. So uh, for those of you who play survival mode, it's a really handy game engine to have for that reason. Anyway, back here, 
we have a whole bunch of assemblers uh, tied directly to refineries and uh, the reason why that is is the refinery and um, assembler uh, integration has been made so uh, now you can just put stuff into these refineries and they'll automatically go into the assemblers and make stuff for you so that's what this is back here so whether it be spare parts for the gravity drive or uh, guns or anything it you know miscellaneous ammo, or any repairs ammo you know, basic yes. things basic things that's and what then we have a a real large amount of uh, gyros of Tons gyros, of gyros. Of gyros. I, our usual large amount of gyros yeah now you might want to ask the reason why we have this many gyros in this ship is because this gyro weight this ship weighs 83 million kilos main bulk of that weight is actually these artificial masses because believe it or not these are are heavy however the difference between these these masses and the rest of the mass of the ship is these are affected by the gravity generators thus making them able to propel the ship with gravity and uh, as you can see here that there's no group since there's no gravity in here the ship doesn't go anywhere when um, the normal gravity and the rest of the ship is activated and the reason why we did that is because otherwise you'd end up going straight down constantly constantly you'd always be moving downwards and we didn't want that so that's why we turned off gravity in this area and had to place the other gravity generators uh, carefully we but took, anyway, a, that's we, we took a lot of time planning the uh, gravity generator placement actually took up yeah. most of the time of uh, building this was just trying to figure out where to place these things yeah, that way we don't uh, shoot our ship off in a random direction that we didn't want to go <laughs> oh yeah and uh, I don't know if you realize but color coding green is for engineering Yep. And we are going to be adding that into a lot of our other videos. Well, a lot of our newer yep. ship designs. Maybe some retrofits with the Mattis and the uh, Orion giving them the gravity drive to see what happens. Yeah, we're going to see how fast we can make them go. Like right. I said, this ship is very fast for its size. It weighs 83 million kilos, but it's fast as a fighter. So, uh, look out. All right, Actually, it's so almost as fast as a fighter. We're going to go ahead and move size, up. So. Uh, we are going to go ahead and move up to the... Um, living, well, I don't know if I should call it living. It's more uh, like crew the, crew, the crew deck. It's, yeah, more, the crew it's deck. more of a crew deck. Yeah. The crew deck is the middle portion of the ship, like in most of my designs. Bottom portion is for, like, utility and storage, and usually middle is for, like, crew quarters. So, yep. red. What does red stand for? Well, red stands for Medic. medical. It's pretty yep, medical. generic. Like, oh, red stands for blood. So yeah, we yeah. have our contained medical uh, medical systems. Yep. And then we couldn't figure out what to what to label the crew quarters, so we just labeled them blue. Now there <laughs> is a lot of crew quarters on this ship. There is eight rooms, each being able to hold a large amount of crew. So this yeah. so no hot. There's going to be some hot bunking in this in this ship but it's significantly less than the uh other ship ships we yeah. built with the uh, hot bunking for everybody yep so once again we have our crew quarters we have the wonderful little you know storage container for personal gear along with our little bed thing yeah <laughs> the passageway blocks that we call beds because it's just the best use for the passage blocks in our opinion you and know. moving on we're gonna get back down onto the lower lower deck lower deck because there's nothing to see up there <laughs> moving on we have more engineering these are directly behind our side to, our forward side to side engines <coughs> yep and just more gyros <coughs> more little reactors yeah. now you might Sorry. ask why the little reactors up here because uh, those artificial mass chief generators and stuff need quite a bit of power the reason why these are up here it's just in case of the rear engine failure, the ship can still support its crew, so you're not entirely helpless in space. Good old this life design uh, can also work in um, survival mode. Oh, damn it, um, survival mode. So it's a real good design for survival mode because it allows you uh, multiple uh, lanes of redundancy in terms of uh, keeping alive and giving you giving yourself resources to uh, survive. So that's Definitely. basically what this is. So, moving on, we have another gun port on the second deck. This is a warship. This is what I called a battleship. Some people say, well, why not Dreadnought? Murder, murder, why not battle cruiser? And I'm just like, fuck it, battleship. No. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so this is the Titan battleship. Um, 
it has several gun ports along the side, so it, its primary combat effectiveness is along the side. So when in combat, you will have to turn to the side to support it. Now it does have some forward uh, capability, but yeah, it's very little. Once again, I have the windows overlooking the gun ports for uh, convenience and cool looking things. Yeah, so you can easily, easily control the uh, guns, you know, once they're implemented. However they're implemented. And then up here is one of my favorite things. We have six officers' quarters. Yes, that's right. You heard right. Officers' quarters. These are these are the luxury liner rooms, and you'll soon see why. Falcon, go ahead and... Yeah, these Don't are these, these are for the individual course. officers. Every officer working aboard this ship will get issued an individual room. There, there should yep. be six officers. The captain, the first mate, chief engineer, uh, chief armor, well, chief gunnery, well, gunnery chief for the for the guns or battery chief, whatever you want to call them, armorer. So pretty yeah. much like. There, there's even room to spare, so if this thing wanted to be a science ship, we could have a science officer living on it. Yep. And each yep. one of these rooms is an individual bed and storage area. So, as an officer, you won't have to worry about hot bunking with all the uh, with all the enlisted, all the Tetsky yeah. enlisted, all the <laughs> midshipmen. So. Yep. You know, there's some separation between the officers and the crew on this ship. Like, that you would actually yeah, see on higher, actual higher military, key. on more modern, like, in every military in general. You don't want the the officers fraternizing with the, uh, with the enlisted. Yeah, Moving on, we have idea. a big empty area. This is a big empty space room. We don't, don't know, know what to do with play, it. Uh, yeah, I guess you could play, like, tag in here or something, I mean... You could use it I as a. Know. You could build a makeshift target range. You could. I don't know. Yeah. It's a utility room. We're gonna see and we're gonna wait and see what this uh, game comes out with, and yeah. uh, maybe add on to it. Because right now we couldn't really come up with anything. If you guys have an idea, paste your idea in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Moving this on. Room waiting for a purpose. Anyway, I got this. Now we're gonna go Good. up the alternate route. Well, I'm gonna show you the alternate route. Now, there's a, instead of going up the main uh, column of stairs, you could go up this side column of stairs from the second to third deck. It yeah, comes in handy right for, quick, uh, for quick <laughs> access, but we're going to go back. Actually, we're just going to go through this from the front. Yeah. Yep. The so front. Anyway, the front. We have our, we have our, uh, batter, our forward batteries. Yep. Along with the uh, uh, control panels, along with another little forward gun port, gun port, <laughs> missile port. Actually, it's we don't port. we don't know what to do sure. with that. Yeah, <laughs> this ship was not designed to be strong facing forward. It's it has iron sides, but the front is kind of like here's a here's a missile turret. I mean, we do have uh, we do have guns up on the top deck facing forward, but its main meat. Is all the, its main firepower is on the sides. Yeah, hence the reason why we made this ship fast. We made it to where uh, it could uh, get alongside any other ship fairly easily. And uh, yeah, it, once again, my nice little gun port design. Can't remember yep. how to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Down. There now we, go. we right. use a lot of uh, mirroring in this ship, so this is the same as in all the other sides. This is a, a storage compartment. You know, just basic yep. storage. Now here is storage. our nice little airlock. Come on in. Yep. The airlock. This airlock is to, I guess, like de will compress or decompress so that way you can enter and exit to space. Yep. And this opens and you'll have to walk up a giant staircase. Stairway. Yeah. To look up to do some fixing along the top of the ship. There's a lot yep, of guns up here. Yeah, <laughs> go back in the ship and uh, continue going through this. Yep, go ahead and close the doors. Yep. And then yep. we'll compress for a second, and there we go. Yep. Now moving along, we have once again more storage, except... If any of you have seen the Orion video, I did the same thing as the in the Orion video, where I originally yep. built something there to be something else, and I was like, 
screw it, let's just put engines there. And that is our <laughs> forward down thrusters along the forward yep. half of the ship to get some equalization in there. And then yep. I have windows up there to look up. Looks kind of cool. It's an observation yeah, it's room. Just, it's just kind of aesthetic, you know. Just, and kidding. this is another uh, empty utility space that I don't know what to do with. Oh, and what's Actually, this? I call, I call this like a uh, like a meeting place. I don't know. Yeah, you know, may maybe room. once I come out with more stuff, I might make a briefing room. Yeah, oh, and if you look forward, room. you see yellow. Hmm, command and control. <laughs> what? What could be behind this door? <laughs> <laughs> or a set of doors. This oh, it's is bridge. the secured bridge. Now, in combat. Uh, a bridge on the upper deck surrounded by glass is an issue so we have yeah. a separate bridge just in case you're in combat in combat this will be the bridge yep pretty much this is the combat bridge because there's no windows no way to kill the pilots unless of course you shoot through the whole damn thing I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean the armor up there is four thick yeah, you're armor not on the sides is four easy. thick. Yeah, this this thing is secured. <laughs> it's just a giant secured room. Yep. So anyway, on to the next combat, part. In combat, we could use this as a uh, as a special room. Go ahead and close all the doors. Yes, we made three sets of doors. Reason why we made it, we thought it would be more of a hassle to get in, you know, so you could t easily detect intruders and take care of them. And we're gonna go up on the top top floor here once again. Another gun port along the side. You can see the yep. space armor. And then I'm going to show you something. This is... Pretty much when I put the deck there, I had to design a little walkway to go around it. Because when, when in combat, that room's secured. Nobody's allowed in, nobody's allowed out. Yep. So, say... That... Say, you know, you're busy piloting the ship, but an uh, engineer needs to move from the back to the front of the ship. On well, the third floor. Well, this walkway is to do the to do the piece. This is more like a loft. It's a very weak armor. Well, actually, not weak, but it's moderately thick armor. Uh, I believe it's two units thick. Um, the reason why we did this is because uh, you're going to need alternate ways to get from point A to point B. You can't always go through the most secure areas of the ship if you want to see, you know, want to do something or get it done, you know. So yeah, this, you want to be able to move around. Uh, through multiple routes, just in case one route gets compromised. Now we're right, gonna walk right. back here to the uh, staircase, and we're more walk stairs. To this grand Ooh. staircase. <laughs> more staircases. We're gonna walk up here. More stairs, man. Oh man, this like running up a skyscraper with stairs. Now, lots, before lots we walk into the command and control yellow room. I'm going to show you this. This is an exterior uh, exit. You know, you're, an engineer can walk around and do work. I'm actually going to be yeah, editing you... that to make the door thicker. Possibly during one of the retrofits. That was just there to... That's just there as a quick entry, and a quick entry and exit to fix things. Now, yeah, just to access the top area. The bridge. This is the primary bridge. All windows... <sighs> yeah. It looks beautiful. I actually love it. You have the ability to look out onto the front of the ship. Yeah. You can look out down the sides. Captain the once again. Lighting. <laughs> Check once out the again, the the, the, the cat the captain sits up top above the rest of the crew because the captain is better, I guess. I don't know. The captain needs to be able to see what everybody's doing. Yeah. Then up here, you can look at the rear engine stack. Looks really beautiful, doesn't it? And we even have love some rear facing love. guns. Um, yep. More, uh, more, more chairs. Now, pretty much everybody could sit here and take a chair and uh, <laughs> control this area. Yep. Now, this little area. This is this is um, when we originally designed this. The rear engine stack didn't go up far enough. Yeah. So we wound up with a giant space underneath the back of it. So I just built a tiny little gun port. <laughs> Kind of a baby gun port, you know. This is the uh, gun port that's directly accessible by the bridge. You know, it's kind of convenient. You know, it's just you know, know a secondary gun port area. I don't know. I was just like, why not just put more guns? <laughs> yep. So that's what we did there. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, go running down. Finish up this video.
Actually, yeah. hey Dan, I want to get the uh, get the hangar doors in at. Actually, I want to get the hangar doors in action. Um, well, I'm gonna I've walk you. Doors before, but okay. <laughs> okay. How to work the doors is you enter a terminal and you find yep. right side and left side. It will say okay. either negative point, uh, negative zero point something or positive zero point something. Whatever right. it is, change it to the opposite negative. Do not make it too fast. Okay, we don't want to break the doors. Okay, got it. All right, so All right, I'll go up to the bridge, and we'll see this in action. You guys will actually get to see this really cool thing in action. No, These we, guys are badass. Okay. Like, like, after I designed it, and after we finished this ship, we spent time oogling the doors. Now, the cool yeah, thing because, about this is when you're flying yeah. along the side of the ship, they don't look like doors. They don't. No, they they don't. look like an armored piece. But... Once Dan yeah. goes ahead and opens them... Yeah, they've got to scroll through all these things. One of the features that I'm really wanting to... Uh, I really want to see implemented is... Uh, nested um, items in the, uh, in the uh, control panel because... An action menu. An action menu, yes. essentially. Just yes. like to where you could group all of the... Uh, group a lot of things to one thing. So yeah, that so way you could turn on and off all the lights, all the interior lights at, at once. Or you could open and close all the doors on one level at once. That would be really nice to have those action groups. Because yeah. it's a pain to scroll through some Thousand three, lights. some like 500 <laughs> items on a list to find the hangar doors. They're labeled right and left hangar doors. Yeah, so I'm still scrolling through all the interior lights, all 1,500 and some. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of interior lights. So anyway, let me okay. know when you're about to start. I'm going to walk through a little things. Now, if you can see, you, I have the rays, well, the spaced armor. Um, the only reason I put those on there is for uh, looks and the fact that they also reduce the, uh, reduce the chance of a critical hit. Okay, there's hit. one hangar door. Okay. It's probably the other That's side. That's the left one. Yep, yeah, it's the left side. I'm on right side. Okay, um, I'll open that. I'll let, open that one up to the full ninety degrees, real quick. All right. Now these things swivel open real cool, and they actually yeah. they actually wind up swiveling back into this little uh, outcropping here, which hides it fairly well. So when it's open, you can't tell there's a door, and when it's closed, you can't tell it's a door. So yeah, it's really cool. It winds up looking real cool. All right, and there's the door. Yep, you can see it opening. Beautifully, um, really quite cool. Beautifully <laughs> revealing that there is a hangar behind that door. Yeah, this and as may you can see, be what's a... really also awesome is that the uh, door is actually nest inside of that um, shroud, so they actually disappear. So it makes it look like there's no door there. In reality, there is a door there. Really quite cool. <laughs> Continue anyway. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of people that make their hangar doors do this whole like have it be a separate ship and slide along rails. But I said screw it. I like swiveling things, so I built a giant swiveling hangar door. Now it's not that thick of armor because it's only a door, but yeah, it's good for its use. It pretty much all it's it's not supposed to protect the hangar as much as it. it as much as it is hiding the hangar. Um, yeah. It could still protect the hangar from board, from uh, boarding craft in combat, but... Yes, it can. And it could still lightly protect the hangar while in combat, but it's mainly just there to where when moving, uh, or if somebody, say, is scouting out and they see this giant warship flying around their sector, they're going to look at it and just be like... Oh, it's a giant warship. I don't see any hangers on it. Yeah. And in reality, there is a hangar. Go ahead and close the door. And yep. it closes the same way. It swivels back into, into place. Now, it does block some windows when it's swiveling. I don't really care. Yeah, it's a transient Those, that's thing. The, that's the crew quarter. That's the enlisted quarters anyway. I don't care. I'm the captain, so... <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually really helpful when it comes to concealing the fact that this ship has a hangar. 
Because when it when in flight, nobody can tell there's an actual hangar there. Anyway. Yeah, they, yep. That's all for now. Uh, tune in for our next video of testing the gravity engine. Um, once again, I'm Patrick with Amazing Picture Studios. And I'm Dan with Amazing Picture Studios. Y'all have a good one.